Your ability to write code is determined by how good you are at avoiding your mobile phone. In this video I'll show you how to replace doom scrolling on TikTok, watching endless YouTube videos and scrolling all day with a more productive but still addictive programming task that might also make you money. Say goodbye to endless scrolling and hello to addictive money making programming projects. I have a lot of experience with doom scrolling. At the worst I've been, my weekly average screen time was over 8 hours. TikTok is the worst one for me, it's bizarre thinking about it now, but I spend 40 hours every week, a full-time job just rotting away on my phone. Depression was very real during this time, and if that's you right now, I empathize heavily. The sense of lethargy and negativity when we're in a phone addiction rut is soul-crushing, but I'm happy to say that I've improved this massively. My screen time is now down to 3-4 to four hours per day. Still a lot, mind you, but cutting it in half is no small feat either. You're not alone in wanting to scroll less and do more meaningful activities. Every line of code you write is one step away from phone addiction, and unlike the temporary dopamine you get from scrolling, Coding offers real outcomes in the shape of completed projects, some well-deserved dopamine, and a sense of doing something productive for real. So let me present to you my framework for replacing doom scrolling with coding. Step 1 is making sure not to replace scrolling entirely and suddenly. Quitting cold turkey has never been effective for me, or most people I think. The chance of losing motivation and relapsing when doing that is astronomical. What works better is decreasing phone usage gradually. Make sure this week's screen time is slightly less compared to last week. Go on your phone screen time settings right now check what it says for last week and aim for one hour less this week. It's not super easy of course, but it's certainly not too difficult either. Anyone should be able to do it. Repeat that until you reach a screen time that you'd be happy with, and then use the hours and hours you'll unlock to write code. Trust me when I say that quitting gradually is better than quitting cold turkey, because small victories are easier to achieve and will still boost motivation. And no matter how depressed you are, or how much you hate the world at the moment, you can still write one line of code. If today's an awful day, write just one line of code and then go back to bed. Worst case, you're one step closer to finishing your project, but the best case is that you get caught in the flow of it and end up continuing writing code for hours and hours on end. Step two is figuring out what to actually code. The best thing to create for phone addicts is an app. Creating an app can transform your relationship with your phone from a source of distraction to a tool for learning and productivity. The best app you can build as a beginner is a to-do app. That was the first app I ever built, and I strongly recommend you do the same. It covers a broad spectrum of fundamental programming concepts that are transferable to other types of projects, such as creating a user interface, providing a nice user experience, and learning basic database operations. The best programming framework to use for this is Flutter. It works for both iOS and Android, is fairly easy to learn, and is well documented. It's what I used to build my first to-do app. Using Swift for iOS and Kotlin for Android is something you can consider as well. But if you're not sure what to use, or if you're just a beginner, just go ahead and download Flutter. Step 3 is building an app with business value. There are hugely successful apps out there that have made developers crazy amounts of money. The app store generated 1.1 trillion dollars in 2022 and is growing steadily. The market is certainly not saturated yet. I just spent 60 dollars on a meditation app and others are buying apps all the time. So once you've created the to-do app, pick a group of people you'd like to help, define their pain points and then create an app that solves one of those pain points really well. And once you've done that, all you have to do is monetize it. This is the step you'll work on forever and you might not win straight away. Success in app development might not come fast. Just do it over and over again and you might end up creating something incredible, just like I did with my YouTube videos, until one finally popped off and went viral. But no matter what you create, it'll certainly be more impressive than consuming social media all day. Share your story in the comments, click subscribe if you watched this far, and then watch the on-screen video right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.